six steps to purchasing a home. It's The Real Estate Show. Welcome to The Real Estate Show. My name is Rick Nables, owner and broker of Zone Realty LLC. You zone your home. There are a few steps that you need to go through in order to purchase a home. And some people ask me, well, where do I start? So we here at Zone Realty put together a short little buyer seminar that explains the major steps to purchase a home. Six steps to purchasing a home. Let's join the seminar. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, this is just a short little presentation that we put together here at Zone Realty to talk about the steps in purchasing a home. So as new buyers, you have a lot of questions. And of course, there's a lot of in-between stuff. So as I'll say here in this presentation, you need to really trust your realtor to kind of guide you through the transaction. But what we did is we kind of tried to break it down into six easy steps to purchasing a home. So as you can see on the chart here, I've written down what those steps are, and I'd like to take a moment now and just kind of go through them. If you would just kind of hold your questions until the end of the seminar, you might find that some of your questions are answered as I go along here, but of course at the end, we'll leave plenty of time to address your questions and do the best we can to get you the answers that you need. Okay, so six steps to purchasing a home. Step number one. The first step is to get what we call pre-approved or pre-qualification. There's a difference between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval. Pre-qualification just means that you've talked to a mortgage originator or a mortgage officer, given them information about your income and your debts, and they've done some ratios and percentage and analyzed some stuff, and they give you an estimated amount of what they believe you can qualify up to. But it's not carved in stone. It's just giving you an idea of what your affordability is or what you can actually afford uh, as far as a home is concerned based on that conversation. The better thing to do is to go through what's called the pre-approval process. That means that the mortgage officer has actually gotten pay step stubs or income tax returns or something from you to verify your actual income. They've pulled your credit report, looked at your credit, and they're giving you a dollar amount that they believe they can process the mortgage to. That carries a lot more weight for you than, say, a pre-qualification. Sellers like to see those pre-approvals because it means you've gone through the step of already making a mortgage application. You just need to attach the house to it. So again, pre-qualification, pre-approval. Now, let's talk about step two. You've talked to the mortgage originator. You've gotten your pre-approval. What do you do for step two? Well, step two, I'm calling that finding a realtor. Now, not all realtors are the same. Um, every single realtor goes through some training courses. They have certain things they have to do in order to become a realtor. The difference between a realtor and a real estate agent is the realtor has joined a board or association and they're a member of the National Association of Realtors, which means they have to adhere to a strict code of ethics in the way they conduct themselves, in the way that their professionalism is, in the way that they handle a transaction. It's a much more trusted individual when it comes to the real estate transaction than just somebody who got their license because they want to dabble in real estate. So you're going to be looking to work with a realtor. Now the realtor that you're going to pick, the one that you want to work with, they can be part of a big company or a small company. Here's the secret folks, you're working with the realtor, not the company. It's great that the realtor has a big company or a small company or a brokership or whatever it might be to stand behind them to help them help you, but it doesn't really matter. You know, a lot of times I get people that say to me, well, I want to work with a big agency because they have lots of houses to look at. Well, here's the secret, folks. 
All those houses go on the multiple listing service. So every realtor has lots of houses to look at. It doesn't matter who the company is. But again, that's your choice. You're going to pick somebody that you feel you can develop a good trusting relationship. I mean, after all, they're going to help you make one of the biggest purchases in your lifetime. You want to make sure it's somebody you can trust. One of the other things I wanted to mention here, besides just real estate agent, realtor, and a small and big office, is you can use one realtor for the whole process. If you're a seller and you're looking to sell your home, you can also use that same realtor to help you buy your next home. You know, realtors are trained in both areas, both listing homes and soliciting buyers to buy those, and also helping buyers to buy homes. And by having one realtor that you're working with, rather than trying to stay independent and working with a number of them, you don't have to keep repeating your wants and needs. You get to know the one individual, they get to know what you're looking for, they get to know what your family needs are, and it makes the process so much easier because you have that working relationship, that working understanding. Now let's go to step three. Step three is what I call oops, search, find, and make an offer. We'll continue on and get back to the buyer seminar on six steps to purchasing a home right after this. find and make an offer. I've put a number of different things down here on the board uh, on how to go about searching for a house. A lot of us are going to start to search on the internet. And on the internet, of course, you have big sites like Realtor.com, you have the Zillows, the Trulias, the home sites, and so on and so forth, is the Realtors will help you as far as to Once you've sat down with your Realtor and discussed what your wants and your needs are, and you'd rather have this, and you'll trade off that, and so on and so forth in your search, they can search and they can actually target specific types of homes that may interest you through the search tools that they have through the multiple listing service. Of course, you can go to open houses. Uh, if you do go to an open house, you just got to be courteous. Obviously, you're going into someone's home that they're looking to sell. The realtor that's hosting the open house may ask you uh, to sign in so they can tell the seller who is there. Don't be afraid to do that. But one of the main questions the realtor hosting the open house is they're going to ask you, are you represented by a realtor? Are you working with one? And if you are, you want to tell that individual who it is that you're working with so that they can make a courtesy call or send a courtesy email to that agent to let them know you stopped by and looked at the house so your realtor can be prepared to maybe ask or answer any questions you may have about that particular home. Your realtor is going to make recommendations, like I just said, uh, when they go through their search engines and they know exactly what it is that you're looking to buy as far as a home is concerned. Um, again, wants and needs, garage, no garage, big yard, small yard, number of bathrooms, bedrooms, and so on and so forth. And of course, that's all under what you've been pre-approved for. You're obviously not going to look at houses you can't afford. And you might not want to look at houses that are too far in the low end that need too much work. So again, that becomes really important. 
I put down 15 minutes or less here. What I mean by that, statistically, we know that when you walk into a house, first impressions count big time. Um, statistically, they say that you're going to make a decision on whether you want to buy that house within seven minutes of going in that front door. I like to say 15 minutes because that's about the average time that it takes you to actually walk through the whole house. Because your first impression may not be absolutely perfect, but as you go through the house and you see what it has to offer, room sizes and so on and so forth, you might start to formulate in your brain that this is a house uh, that you might want to make an offer on. Now, when you make an offer, how much do you offer? I mean, you know what the seller is asking for the house, right, because it's listed. Um, but how much do you offer? Do you give them their asking price? Is there a negotiation room? Uh, can you try and get the house for cheaper? Um, do you offer $20,000, $30,000 less? I mean, where do you make your offer? Well, when you're working with a realtor, you're going to find that making you offer is a little bit easy because the realtor is going to do what's called a buyer's analysis or market analysis on the property to see how it's priced compared to other homes that are out there. And they're going to be able to advise you what is the best offer, the best way to put the offer forward that has the best chance of the seller accepting that offer. National Association of Realtors says that if you land somewhere around 97, 98% of asking price, you usually have a pretty good chance of having your offer accepted as far as the house is concerned. Now you also have to be careful about what you're going to need uh, if that offer gets accepted down payment amount, depending on the program that you're financing under, but also to closing costs. Closing costs can sometimes be a little bit of a mystery because it depends on when you're going to close because they have to factor in leftover taxes or water bills or sewer bills and things along those lines, um, depending again on that date that you're going to close. You'll know exactly what you need for your closing before you go to the closing because now it's required that be disclosed to you so you can review all the numbers. But sometimes if you're a little bit short on money and you're putting all your money into a down payment, closing costs can be negotiated with the seller. And again, that's something you need to talk to your realtor about as to how much you can ask for to try and get enough money in credit at the closing to cover the closing costs that are involved before you get your keys. Now your offer is accepted, now what happens? Okay, we've made an offer, the seller's accepted it, now what do we do? Just sit back and wait to go close? Well, no, not necessarily. There's a couple more steps that have to be achieved before you get to that actual closing. So the next thing that you're going to do after your offer's been accepted is you now have the option to do what we call the inspections. Now the inspections could be a number of different things. They could be based on the size of the house and what the house has. If it's connected to public water or public sewer, you don't need to inspect those things. But if it's a septic or a well, you're going to have to inspect and make sure those things are working correctly. The nice thing about a home inspection is you get to go to the house that you're purchasing and spend a good two, three hours in that house with a professional inspector that goes through everything from top to bottom. You've only been in the house 15 minutes before, so now it's a chance to go back and really make sure this is the home you want to purchase. And if there are any issues that turn up in the home inspection, you have the opportunity to go back to the seller with the advice of your realtor and negotiate on some things you may want to have attended to or fixed before you actually close on the home. So, all the systems of the homes are going to go through. You want to allow yourself two or three hours. I recommend that if you're working, you take the day off uh, so you can spend as much time in the house as you possibly can with your inspector, but you need to attend that inspection. There's other inspections that may be recommended. Uh, what's common is a pest inspection, or what we call a termite inspection, especially if it's an older home. Uh, inspections for radon. Uh, radon is an invisible gas that naturally occurs in the ground. It's radioactive, it's everywhere. We're breathing in radon right now, but we're in an area that's properly ventilated, so it's not a big worry. But if you're buying a house that has a family room in the basement or a bedroom in the basement or a part that you're going to live, uh, you want to make sure you do a radon test just to make sure everything's safe. And of course, you can always have inspections done for mold. 
Whenever there's water attached anywhere, you're going to have mold. So you want to make sure that you're aware if there's any issues as far as that's concerned. Now, if I said any problems are found, you then go back to the seller through your realtor and you're able to negotiate to see if you can have some problems addressed or fixed before you get to the end of that closing. So you get through all your inspections, everything is fine, you've negotiated, everything is great. Now what do you need to do? Well, around this time, either before or after, the bank has sent out an appraiser to appraise the property. And I once did a real estate show, I talked about the three prices of buying a house. There's the price that the seller wants, there's the price that you end up offering, and then of course there's the number or the price that the banks can set on the house as to what they feel comfortable they're going to finance. That appraisal is very important because if the house doesn't appraise for what you're paying, now you've got to go back to the negotiation table and renegotiate. Okay? And somewhere during all this process, the home inspection and the appraisal, you also want to talk to an attorney. You need to have an attorney to represent you at your closing. So this is a really good time to pick the attorney that you're going to use that's going to help you go through all of your made mortgage. That's going to help you go through all your mortgage paperwork and everything that needs to be done. Represent you in your best interest when you're there. Okay, so step five is what I just mentioned. You're going to have to now get a homeowner's insurance policy. Now what you're going to find is that the banks like to escrow. In other words, they want to collect monies up front from you uh, in your mortgage payment. And it's not only principal and interest, but it's also the monies to pay your homeowner's policy and also to pay the taxes. Because the bank wants to protect its investment. They're putting a lot of money out for you to get this particular home. So that's got to be escrow. But that's taken in each payment and then paid out yearly. So they need you to get a head start. So they're going to ask you to go out and get a home insurance policy on the home that's for a full year. In other words, pay for a full 12 months right up front. So you want to be prepared for that because some people don't think about that and that's money that they're going to have to lay out uh, that's not part of their closing costs. Uh, something that they need to do because you've got to bring that certificate to the closing to show that you have the house insured and your policy starts right on the day of the closing. So the moment you close on that house, you're fully insured on the house and you can move in, no worries, going from there. Um, there's other insurance policies that do get involved. Again, an insurance agent could talk to you about that. Your realtor has the ability to look at the flood maps and look at the home and where it's located. Folks, if a house is located to any kind of water, Flood becomes a big issue, even if it's a small little stream. So you want your realtor to be able to check to see whether or not the house is in a flood zone. And if that's going to be something that you're going to need to get in order to close. Because flood insurance could turn out to be very expensive, especially if you're near an area that's prone to flooding. So keep that in mind. So after you've gone through all the different steps, you finally get to the point of where you're looking to close on the house. And that's our last step, step number six, which I call the closing step. Now, closing can involve a number of different things. And um, the best thing with the closing is when you hear from your banker or your mortgage officer that you're clear to close. Those are magic words, because that basically means everything's done, all the paperwork's in place, and you're ready now to have that appointment to go to the attorney's office, do the paperwork, and close on your new home. So you're looking to hear that. Realtors love that sound because that means their job is almost done. Um, closing costs are going to be um, points on the mortgage. They could be taxes that are due. They could be the oil in the tank that's left over. There's a number of them. The attorney figures that all out. And as I said, you get a statement that shows you exactly what your closing costs are going to be. Most of the time, you as the buyer who's picked the attorney, you're going to close at your attorney's office if it's convenient. A lot of attorneys now go out in the field. They can close here at the real estate office. Uh, they can close at the property. Um, but they prefer sometimes to do it in their office just in case there's any last-minute negotiations or problems with paperwork. They can correct it right then and there and not delay anything for you. Uh, all the final details are then made out. 
On your way to your closing, you go through what's called a walkthrough. It's when you have the ability to visit the property before you actually close on it. That's for your final visual inspection. Any items negotiated in the home inspection for repairs or whatever, you want to make sure those were done. You want to make sure whatever you're buying is there. In other words, if the sale included the washer and dryer, you want to make sure the washer and dryer are still there, and so on and so forth. Because when you get to your closing, your attorney is going to say to you, so how'd the walkthrough go? And you're going to tell them. If there is an issue, something hasn't been done, something has not been fixed, you need to let your attorney know. Because now your attorney will meet with the other side and they'll do the last minute negotiation to get that problem solved. And there's a number of different ways that can be done without delaying you actually closing the day that you're planning to close. Title is looked at on the house. You've got to make sure you have a clear title, that there's no uh, problems with it, because obviously you want to be the only owner of the house when you're buying it. So your attorney is going to do what's called a title search. They'll go back as far as 40 years, maybe longer, to make sure that there are no problems with the title and it conveyed or transferred to you uh, with no issues. And then, of course, when everything is done and all the paperwork signed and all the questions have been answered and all the negotiations are done, you're going to get your keys and you're going to move into your new home. So that's it. Six steps to a home. Uh, I hope I didn't simplify it too much. Now I'll take some questions. That was very interesting in the seminar. I went through the six steps of purchasing a home. Let's take a quick look at this presentation. It kind of puts it all together for you.
My name is Rick Naples. This has been The Real Estate Show. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.